Hebrew and Arabic are perhaps the two most iconic Semitic languages. The Semitic languages are a language family that comprises many known languages once or still spoken mainly in the Middle East and Ethiopia. In this video, we will compare Hebrew and Arabic, specifically modern Hebrew and Palestinian Arabic. We will focus on the consonant correspondences. This will make cognates appear easily in both languages. We will be going through each consonant one by one, how it sounded in Proto-Semitic, and what happened to it in Hebrew and Arabic, respectively. The plosives will go first. P in Proto-Semitic went through interesting changes in Hebrew. The phenomenon called Begat Kefat, or Begat Kefet, changed all the regular and geminative plosives into fricatives after a vowel. P, T, K, and B, D, G become F, T, H, and V, D, R. Thus, many P's become new F's in Hebrew. In Hebrew, P and F are still written using the same letter, P. But in Arabic, well, unlike Hebrew, every single P became an F. Modern Arabic lacks a P sound. Compare Arabic Fa'al with Hebrew Pa'al, to do. Or, well, Latin-derived English Palestine and Arabic Philistine. Next, B, same thing. Hebrew went through Begat Kefet, changing plosives after a vowel into a fricative. Thus, many B become V. Arabic kept all the Bs intact, so compare Arabic Kalb versus Hebrew Kelev, dog. On to T, again, Hebrew went through Begat Kefet, but out of the six regular plosives that fricativized, only three made it to modern Hebrew, possibly due to the other languages' influence which lack these fricatives. Obviously, T originally became a th, as in English think, but many languages don't have this sound, so under influence, the liturgical Hebrew reverted all the original th back into a t. However, Ashkenazi varieties changed the th into an s instead, so you'll find many Hebrew traditions from Europe that have a t after a vowel pronounced as an s. Next, we have a very interesting sound, adjective ta. The Semitic languages are infamous for these peculiar emphatic consonants. Hebrew, probably from influence from other European languages, much later on, merged this adjective ta, probably after becoming pharyngeal ta, into the regular ta sound. Yet modern Hebrew still differs the original ta with the original emphatic ta in writing. Taf versus tit. Arabic, on the other hand, retained the adjective ta, which became pharyngeal ta, still distinct from the regular ta. Thus compare Arabic tayyib to Hebrew tov, good, or okay. On to da, again Hebrew went through begat kefat, which I changed this into the voiced the, as in English the. But again, under influence from other languages, all of these thes reverted to da. In Arabic, within the d's is d's completely. Next, velar plosives, ka went through begat kefat in Hebrew to kha, while Arabic retained the k's in all positions. Thus compare Arabic and some dialects, okel versus Hebrew, ochel, food. There was also an adjective ka phoneme. In Hebrew, it eventually merged the typical k after becoming pharyngeal and uvular ka, but is still distinguished in writing. In Arabic, like the adjective ta, the phoneme became pharyngeal and eventually uvular ka. In modern Arabic varieties, this sound is highly variable. In modern standard Arabic, it is a uvular ka. In Palestinian Arabic and plenty of other Arabic dialects, it merges with the glottal stop in most words. Thus, the Arabic name for Jerusalem, Al-Quds, becomes Al-Uds. The name comes from the Arabic verb holy, compare Hebrew Kadosh, or even compare Arabic Koran, which comes from the verb Ka'ra'a, to read or recite, in the Hebrew Liko. The Latin alphabet, which English and many other languages use, derives from the Greek and ultimately the Phoenicians, alphabet, a Semitic language. So if you ever wonder where the letter Q exists, now you know it's because the Semitic languages have a peculiar ka sound. On to the final plosive, ga, Hebrew again went through Begat Kefet, turning ga into a fricative ra after a vowel. But again, like ta and the, under influence from other European languages, these all reverted back to ga. So again, out of the six plosives that fricativize, pa, ba, and ka, still have their derived fricatives in modern Hebrew, fa, va, and cha. Arabic actually palatalized the g sound, becoming something like j in classical early Islamic times. In modern standard Arabic, the phoneme is pronounced like the English j sound, and some Arabic varieties, including Palestinian, even deafricated the j to sound like the j in English vision or French j. 
Thus compare Palestinian Arabic Jamal and Hebrew Gamal, camel. Next, we move on to the sibilants, and boy did Proto-Semitic had plenty. First, Proto-Semitic had the affricates, tsa and za, which both the affricated in Hebrew and Arabic becoming sa and za. Proto-Semitic also had an S sound, a retracted S sound probably, somewhat between a typical S and a SH sound, just like Proto-Indo-European or Latin. This is one very important distinction in the phonology of Hebrew and Arabic. In Hebrew, once the S the affricated to S, the original retracted S retracted further to a SH in order to better differentiate the two. In Arabic, once the S the affricated into an S, the new S and the original retracted S simply merge, and thus you can compare Arabic Salam and Hebrew Shalom, among many others. The iconic story in the book of Judges, where the Gileadites identify fleeing surviving Ephraimites at the Jordan River after a battle by having them say Shibolet, stream, river, might relate here. The Ephraimites apparently pronounced Shibolet as Sibolet. Today, a Shibolet is still the term referred to when you can identify someone based on pronunciation. What may have happened is that the Ephraimite dialect, like Arabic, Merge the retracted S and the new S together, and just like Salam versus Shalom, you have Sibolet versus Shibolet. Although this is just one hypothesis, we will soon examine another just as interesting one. Proto Semitic also had two interdental sibilants, voiceless th and voiced the, as in English think and the. In Hebrew, they merged with the sibilants, the retracted S, which later became a sh, and z. Modern Standard Arabic still has these sounds retained, but many modern Arabic varieties merge them with sounds depending on the dialect and the word. Palestinian Arabic largely merged them with T and D in most words, and S and Z in others. So compare Hebrew Shalosh and Palestinian Arabic Talate 3, or Hebrew Ze'ev and Palestinian Arabic Dib Wuf. The other hypothesis concerning the Shibolet story is that the word originally had a th sound, and the Gileadites at some point still retained the th pronunciation in Sibolet, and thus, unlike the Gileadites, the Ephraimites lacked the th sound, and the closest equivalent they could come up with was s, just like how modern Hebrew or German speakers might pronounce English think as sink. Presumably, the writer of the story had no way of writing the th sound, and so went with the letter shin. Ironically, modern English pronunciation has a sh and a th in shibboleth. The next phoneme Proto-Semitic had is a very peculiar lateral th, like the double sh in Welsh, but as an affricate. It is de-affricated to sh, both in Hebrew and Arabic. Hebrew wrote this sound with a sheen, thus the latter actually represented two sounds, sh and sh. Yet this unusual sound eventually merged with s, yet it is still spelled with a shin, or sin. Arabic instead turned this sound into a sh, which is how Arabic has the sh sound. Compare Hebrew small and Arabic shamal, left. The last three sibilants are all ejective affricates, tsa, tsa, and tsa. In Hebrew, the last two merged with the first ejective tsa. After becoming pharyngeal, it eventually became a typical tsa affricate. In Arabic, the story is much more complicated with these consonants. All of them became pharyngeal and were probably still pronounced as affricates during classical times. Pharyngeal tsa de-affricated into pharyngeal tsa, thus compare Arabic psalm and Hebrew tsom, fast, or Hebrew katse and Arabic aksa, and for this point, as in the furthest point, Muhammad traveled north. The next sounds are highly variable among modern Arabic varieties. Earlier on, they became voiced. Since classical times, the deafricated, while dva became da. The Arabs even called the language the language of the dad, since they thought the sound was unique to them. In modern standard Arabic, there are pharyngeal da and dha. In Palestinian Arabic and others, there are pharyngeal da and za. So compare Palestinian Arabic baid and Hebrew beitza, egg and Palestinian Arabic Zod, and Hebrew Tzoraim, noon.
Finally, we're done with the Semitic sibilants. Let's move on to the final fricative. Proto-Semitic had a uvular ra and pharyngeal a. Hebrew wrote these phonemes with the same letter, ein. The uvular ra eventually merged with the pharyngeal a, and recently modern Hebrew has made the pharyngeal a merge with the glottal stop or become silent. Arabic simply retained these two sounds completely, thus aza is still pronounced raza. Transcribed into European languages as a g, Gaza, while modern Hebrew speakers refer to the city as Azza. It's very similar with the voiceless equivalents of these phonemes, uvular ch and pharyngeal ch. Hebrew wrote the sounds using the same letter, chet. Uvular ch merged with the pharyngeal ch. However, under European influence, all the new and old pharyngeal ch became uvular ch, merging with the fricative derived from k. Arabic, again, simply retained both sounds, uvular and pharyngeal alike. The last fricative, ha, is very recently usually elided in modern Hebrew, while retained in Arabic. Thus, Arabic still has a three-way distinction between ha, ha, and ha, while Hebrew has ha, and now the ha is practically gone as well. Proto-Semitic also had a glottal stop, which is usually silent in modern Hebrew, but retained in Arabic, Thus, the modern Hebrew letters Ein, Aleph, and A are usually all silent. Finally, onto the Sonorans, Na, Ma, and Ya practically went unchanged in both Hebrew and Arabic, though Na can become Vilar, Nya, before Ka and Ga in modern Hebrew. Initial Wa shifted to Ya very early on before Hebrew was written down. Let's compare Hebrew Yelid and Arabic Walod, Kid, Boy. Hebrew probably went under European influence, shifted the wa into a va sound, merging with the va that came from ba. Let's compare Hebrew ve and Arabic wa and. Finally, la and ara. La is still largely the same in Hebrew, but in Arabic it sometimes becomes dark and more velar, thus Allah, God, versus Hebrew el. And the Proto Semitic ra was al velar which it still is in Arabic, but in Hebrew, again, recently due to European influence, became uvular, like the French or German ra. Thus, the modern Hebrew ra sound sounds alike to the Arabic rain, the sound in raza. So, funnily enough, in the Hebrew word for West, similar to Arabic, it was magharab, with the uvular ra. After the ra became pharyngeal and eventually silent, the alveolar ra became a new uvular ra, thus modern Hebrew originally maradab, now marav, Arabic marib, and of course English magreb. So that's the comparison of Hebrew and Arabic consonants. Hopefully you found it interesting or useful.